good morning. Let's stand, let's sing together our first hymn. Come Christians join to sing. The words are on the screen or you can find it in your hymn book on page 158. Welcome to this time of worship at Denver United Methodist Church. My name is Steve Autry, I'm senior pastor here. Welcome especially to those of who are our guests. And thank you for that enthusiastic good morning because that's what we need in this place. Announcements, they're on the back of your bulletin. Take a look at them as you can. And please refer to the church website for other information. Here are this morning's announcements. calling all parents. Our family movie night is happening this coming Friday, September 22nd, under the arbor with the feature film, Big Hero 6. Please bring your own chairs and blankets. Light refreshments will be provided. Please contact Jennifer Ingalls with any questions. Mark your calendars. Our ministry fair is happening next Sunday, September 24th, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in the FLC. Please plan to stop by and learn of the many opportunities to serve within our church and community while enjoying fresh coffee, baked goods, and great fellowship. Also happening next Sunday is Harbor Youth's Hype Night. This is a night of worship, prayer, and fun designed to get our youth prepared for See You at the Pole, which happens at school campuses all across the globe. If you're a student or a parent, you are invited to join us next Sunday at the Arbor from 6 to 8 p.m. for an evening you won't forget. If you have any questions, please contact Pastor Ben. As we continue our worship this day, I ask you that to look to your bulletin, and we will be looking to our greeting and our opening prayer. Together, we have entered into worship through welcome, through music, and now we will enter more fully into worship by doing this together. So please respond with what is written in bold. Sing and rejoice. The Lord reaches out to you with healing love. Dance before the Lord, a dance of joy and hope. We remember Let us celebrate the good news God brings to us each day. Let us pray together. Heavenly Lord, when we feel overwhelmed by the storms of life, enter our hearts with your redeeming love, O oh Christ. When our fears overtake us as we cannot find our way, help us remember that you are in control. Give us direction that we might faithfully serve you all of our days. Sing your praises. Amen. And as you are 
standing, please turn to those nearest to you and exchange signs of God's love, reconciliation, and peace. Welcome. continue our worship, we'll be singing our responsive hymn, which is Take Time to Be Holy. The words are on page 395 if you prefer a hymnal, or they will be on the screen behind me. None of us gets through life unscathed. None of us gets even through a week or probably even a day before we fail in some way. Yet God is gracious and merciful. God forgives. And as we come together standing in the presence of God this morning, I invite you to use this confession as a means of acknowledging the places where we have all come up short and experiencing the grace of God's forgiveness. Please join me. Lord, we confess that we don't always turn to you in our troubles. Sometimes we are paralyzed by fear and anxiety. Clear our sight, O Lord. Forgive us when we stray, when we fear, when we falter. Remind us that you are the God of miracles, and you will redeem us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I ask you to remember that Christ our Lord died for us while we were yet sinners, therefore proving God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Would you please be seated? As we enter into a time of prayer together, I invite anyone who would like to come and pray at the altar this morning to please join me. I'm going to kneel as I pray. Uh, so if you feel led to come and pray at the altar, please come and pray. But also know the, 
the space you currently occupy is a space that has been set aside by God for prayer, for worship, for connecting deeply to the very Spirit of God. So whether at the altar or where you are, together let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and amazing God, we give you thanks for this day where you provide for us the rain that this creation needs. May it be for us a reminder that you do give us what we need, that you open up heaven's blessings and heaven's guidance and heaven's resources to guide your people known as the church, the very body of Christ. And in this lofty and high call, calling, Lord, sometimes we don't always get it right. So give us the perseverance to um, continue to strive to grow in you. Give us your grace to continue to move forward. Give us your hope to guide us. We lift up so many things, Lord, for there's so many things that uh, we want to say to you. We, we certainly pray for the people of Libya and the disaster that has befallen that country. We pray for those in places where war is their norm, where, where poverty is overwhelming. We pray, O oh Lord, for all of your creation. And we pray, Lord, specifically for our nation. We're grateful for those who serve, for those who contribute to the betterment of our world, whether they be serving as teachers or, or EMTs, firefighters, police officers, whether they be serving in the branches of the military, wherever they may serve, Lord, lift them up in the ways that they serve. And we are grateful that you have called this church to be a church that serves this community, to make those who are here uh, and in need to, to make them aware, help them see that their prayers are heard and that you are the one who provides. Oh Lord, we pray for this congregation. We, we pray that we would always be faithful to you, that uh, we would rest upon the supernatural claims of your word that say that there is this, that this Holy Spirit that you provide is real and active and moving and shaping us so that we can better serve you. And, oh, Lord, I know that as we gather this morning, there are those here who have their own prayers to offer, things that are either joyous or perhaps even very hard. And so what, whether we need to take to you a thank you, thank you, thank you, or whether we need to come to you with a help me, help me, help me, let us now offer our prayers in the silence of this place directly to you. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bind us together, lift us up, equip us to be who you've called us to be in this community, to model who you are, and to be the very body of Christ. We pray this prayer together that you taught us, Lord, Christ, Lord Jesus, as you instructed your disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. To invite Bob Smith to come up. Bob does so many amazing things in this church and in our community. I'm hesitant to talk too good about him, uh, but he is 
he's become a great friend over uh, he and Terry as they be- joined this church community what about four years ago and just grateful for him and he's come to bring you uh, a witness to what this church is doing in the life of uh, Lincoln County, Catawba County, and several others even. So welcome, Bob, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Steve. Um, four or five years ago, Terry and I decided to change churches, and we had been uh, attending a church in Charlotte for over 32 years. And we said, hey, if we're going to live up here, we want to worship here so we will get to know folks. And I've become to know you and love this congregation and love this church. But when we started looking, I said, I want to attend a church that's active that's involved, that's in the community, that's doing things. So that first Sunday we came and we heard the sermon and it was... So, you know, so, and then we went to this meeting called Helping Hands. And how many people know what Helping Hands is? That day walked in there, what, no, Fat Wally was the chairperson at that time. And I sat down, and an hour and a half later, my head was spinning on what this church is involved in and what they're doing in the community and how they're showing the love of Christ in our community. So if you want to see what that's like, if you want to see what it is, come next Sunday. We're going to meet in the Family Life Center from 930 to 1230. You can come anytime between those hours and look and talk to the people who are in charge of these ministries. Uh, We'll have the table set up. We'll have flyers, posters. Uh, It won't be just folks from our church. We'll have uh, Keith Poston with the Hesed House, who's in charge of the homeless shelter. Come over, talk to him, ask, ask questions. What's going on at the shelter? How many people do you have in the shelter? Uh, it, it's just a, a wonderful time. And so please remember next Sunday to attend that. I want to leave, uh, close with a story. Three or four weeks ago, I got a phone call from Kathy Smith, who works and volunteers at the homeless shelter, the Hesed House in Lincolnton. And she said, Bob, and I'm not going to use the, the real name, but she said, Susan has finally found a place that she can stay in. She finally has a place she can pay the rent because we all know what's happening this day and time, right? Rent is out the roof. And so she has found a place. And I said, that's great. And she said, she needs a bed, a couch, a coffee table. And I said, you know what? I think we can handle that. You know why? Because if you go back here about a thousand yards, there's a building back there. It's the second building. It's got a green roof on it, and it's called Mission Depot. You know about it. You built it. We were able to go pick those items out and help that lady get back on her feet, get back in society. And we were, and, and the, the beauty part of it is it was showing the love of Christ. And you're a part of that. You made that happen. So don't forget next Sunday between 930 and um, 1230 before church, after church, for Sunday school, after Sunday school. Go down there, visit and see where you can plug into these ministries. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Bob. And I would just like to say that um, I remember the day that Bob and Terry came and um, that sermon was awesome, by the way. It was just next level. Um, But as Bob said, you, this congregation, those who consider this to be their church home, made that mission center possible. And you continue to make ministries possible by giving back to God through this church. So if you all would come and and get the plates and give them to our ushers, our ushers are going to come and collect this morning's offering.
please stand up. at this
series is a little different than what we normally do as I, along with Pastor Ben, Pastor David, are sharing in the message piece. And our hope is to be able to convey our excitement for what God is doing in this place as this church has been uh, through a lot recently, and but we are so hopeful for what God is doing. Signs of God's Holy Spirit being present are everywhere. We had a great worship service at 9 a.m. And thank you so much to the choir, to handbells for what you've done for God this morning. We're grateful. Also grateful for Billy in the sound booth because I know even though it's a, to add a couple of microphones, believe it or not, it takes a lot of coordination. So we appreciate that. And those in the live stream room, so much is going on and welcome to those who have been a part of this online. But as we go through this time, you'll be hearing all of our voices to together. Hopefully our, our prayer is to speak certainly what God wants us to hear this day. Would you pray with me? Lord, as we come to share what you've laid on our hearts collectively, we pray that your Holy Spirit would reign, that you would speak, and that we would hear from you. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Out of reverence for our God and his word, if you would please stand during the reading. This morning we will be reading out of Psalm 77, starting with verse 11. It is written, I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your strength among the peoples. You have by your power redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So a little congregation participation. Raise your hand if you created a baby book for your children when they were born. Right, that's the majority of us. How long has it been since you've looked at it? <laughs> wow, huh? Uh, when my daughter was born, Amy and I started a, the tradition that uh, every month on the day Riley was born, we would put her in the same chair and I would put a picture or a drawing up there that said, today I am so many months old and took that picture every single month for five years straight. And if you don't think David is disciplined, <laughs> then you don't know David. <laughs> I would have thought about that and never followed through. So that's who I am. 
So, and then, so we have five years of this, these photos, and then my wife and I would create a date night, and we would every month fill out a little journal next to that photo of the things Riley did that month, or maybe she accomplished that month. Since then, I think we've looked at it once. Um, I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm sure you probably have a few hundred photos on your phone. Oh, yeah. When's the last time you've flipped through and looked at all of them? Um, well, 99% of the photos that I've taken and my wife has taken, and we share a Google Photos account, so all of our you know, photos are on the cloud. Um, I will say we don't look at those, but I will say the nice thing about some technology is sometimes it does the remembering for us, which I know is lazy on my part, <laughs> uh, but they'll come up with like a, a little kind of collage or you know a memory video of watching a kid grow up, you know, one of our sons grow up or, you know, Remember that trip we went on five years ago on this date? And then you kind of reflect. But you're right. 99% of the photos that we've taken, the memories of our children as they grew, I have lost. Uh, you have two daughters. Um, <laughs> yep. What's their phone number? <laughs> Maggie Sell. <laughs> Elizabeth Sell. <laughs> Can't put that out there, David. <laughs> I mean, we grew up knowing yeah. 10, yeah, 20 five, phone numbers. I mean, I still remember mine from when I was a kid, 704-531-4531. I, I thought you were so old that you had like four numbers. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> he's, he's one year older than me, just That's in case right. you're wondering. Would you believe I'm his senior? How cool is that? <laughs> That's why I'm executive pastor, he's senior pastor. <laughs> so the point is obviously, we have probably can recognize, have become a society that we are very good at capturing, but we've lost the art of remembering. And remembering is very important to a healthy Christian. It is very important to a healthy society. And it's so important that God tells us in his word to remember 172 times. He also tells us do not forget 103 times in his word. So Ben, you're good with numbers. What, what's God saying about that? You know, I was a baseball guy, so stats are kind of my thing. Um, but no, numbers are important when it comes to Bible study. I mean, that's a, that's a strategy when you, uh, you look at a word and see how many times it's mentioned in a, in a scripture or in a passage or in a, in a whole text, in the whole complete library of the Bible. Um, it, it, it means it's significant if there's a high number of representatives petition. And so for me, that screams that, that this is important, that remembering is a command most of the time by God, especially for his people, the Israelites, to remember what God did for them. Like the Psalm we just read, remember that God delivered them from slavery, that God delivered them as they lived as a foreign land. Uh, and even before that, God delivered them from a famine and, and providing Joseph and provenient grace that he was at work in his, in his providence. But I think it's, it's really emphasized throughout scripture for us to not forget as well as remember. And do you want me to say a little bit about the difference between that? Please. Um, so in my take, remember and do not forget are a little bit different. Uh, in, in, in my view, it's a little bit more that remembering are positive moments, uh, positive things that hopefully, you know, when we reflect, when we meditate and we remember certain memories of, of kind of like how we came up, our childhood, memories of our children, memories of going on trips, vacations, remembering what God did during a season of our life when we were, you know, lost or broken or, or empty, um, that invokes in us a response that is more positive. And for do not forget, for me, um, you know, and as a father, as a pastor, when I'm emphasizing, do not forget, you know, don't forget your passport before we go to the airport on the missions trip, right? That, you know, very specific example, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a negative consequence if you forget to brush your teeth. You're like, do not forget to take out the trash. Like, there is a consequence that might follow so, this urgency. So just for example, today is my wife's birthday. And it's important for me to remember that. No, it's important for you to not forget. Yeah, right. I think it is more important that I not forget because the consequences would be... Yeah. I, uh, so I get what you're saying. You didn't mention that last service. Did, did something I change? Forgot. I forgot. <laughs> so... 
<laughs> so Steve, with what Ben's talking about with the remember that, you know, I, I think we are called to remember that God delivered us. He provided for us. He guided us. Maybe speak to that from a congregational standpoint and an individual standpoint. So this idea of remembering where you have been is throughout scripture. And it is part of the larger narrative of scripture. Uh, so s scripture has specifics, but it has larger themes that carry throughout from the beginning to the end, uh, from creation to restoration, uh, from, um, from our fall. Part of what we did this morning in our act of confession, so, so much of our worship service are acts of memory. We have to remember that. I mean, so what we try to do in a worship service is to engage, the, to remember we are created by God, we're created in God's image. That, if you forget that, it gets really hard to navigate all the rest because it starts with blessing. Then that, and then it's important for us to remember, like we did in our confession, that we're, we mess things up. Yeah. We err. We, we go sideways from God's intent. And so important to remember the fall, the, that we brought harm into the world. And then God's acts of provision and restoration are ongoing through who Jesus is. So it goes, uh, and it goes something like creation and, uh, to fall to the calling the people of Israel to be God's representatives to the world, to incarnation, the showing up of Jesus. The Jesus event is something that we can never forget. And we absolutely should remember and the restoration of all of creation that Jesus came to initiate. If you look at the front of the communion table, many of you grew up in congregations that had these types of tables. And on the front, right there, do this in remembrance of me. It's a command from our Lord to remember what he did for us. And and I, and it's a it's a fascinating kind of symbol, and if you pay closer attention to what shows up in the symbols of the church, the other prominent one that shows up over and over again is IHS. I remember when I started to engage into the the symbols and liturgy of the church because I didn't grow up with that. I thought IHS meant in His service, and I thought I'd figured that out. Well, that's not what it stands for. It stands. It's the first three letters of Jesus's name in Greek. I uh, and it remember who Jesus is. It's part and parcel of our entire worship experience because it tells us who we are. And in a world where there's so many things trying to tell you who you are, to define who you are, what you believe, and what your values are, we absolutely have to have the witness of the church to say, no, you're, you're so much more than a consumer. You're so much more than uh, a number on a roll. You're so much more than all the things that are out there. You're, you're so much more out there than clickbait uh, uh, on social media. You are created in the image of God. Do not forget that. And so it's both blessing, remember, and warning. Because when we forget, our very being is up for grabs. So the do not forget, um, you mentioned it, you used the word, it's, there's a sense of urgency there, right? There's, yeah. there's a warning, and that, that warning is against neglecting, recalling, and knowing what God's commandments are, what his teachings are, the experiences that he shared with us. Um, and these words are meant and are repeated so many times which means there's an emphasis there. Mm. And one of those major emphasis uh, is empathy. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, totally. Uh, empathy is crucial. And we talked last week about empathy being a key component in reconciliation. Um, and I think the gospel, the story of reconciliation of man and God or creation and God is, is part of the roots, part of the source of how we live our life. And so empathy for me, um, and I was going to say something else, but, but we can disregard that. We can move forward with empathy because when God commands the people to remember 
what he did for them. Uh, remember that you were a slave. You were a foreigner in a, in a land that was not kind to you at a time. You were um, broken and empty. You were in the wilderness. Remember the, the orphan. Uh, you were aimless and without an authority figure for a time. Uh, remember the widow. Uh, remember those who are the most vulnerable in the world. Um, because God loves all. God created all right? And he has a plan for all, to redeem and restore all. And when you empathize, you remember and reflect on earlier in your life when you were at a vulnerable spot, when you were um, maybe not making the income that you now have. Maybe you were in poverty. Maybe you were a foreigner going to a new school, right? And, and seeing the dynamics of what that's like. Uh, maybe you were the widow, right? And you didn't have the way to kind of make it through or, or the provisions were taken from you when you lost a job. Um, there's all sorts of direct connections when we can empathize remember earlier in our life when God brought us from something. And it's key in the story of Israel because Israel, let me just say this for a second. Israel didn't have a lot of these scripture in the package that we have to this day. We didn't have the Bible as we have it. They couldn't just go and read at any time and any place in any day. They had to remember these stories because they were an oral culture. And so they dwelled on this constantly. The fact that God loves them, that God provided for them that God is their God and that they are his people. This constant state of surrounding yourself with Steve, what you're talking about with worship, there's certain smells that invoke certain memories. There's certain songs and sounds that will invoke in us certain memories. It's important to surround ourselves with a setting, with a place where we are specifically remembering the power of what God has done for us. And I, I think also um, it helps parenting to uh, whether you're a grandparent or a parent or an aunt, uncle, if you're to remember what it felt like for instance, when you were young, I have two teenage daughters, and believe me, there's so many times I want to just like, why are you upset? Uh, I, you've got everything. Like, you've got, you've got a home, you've got food, you've got this, that, 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 and um do you remember what it was like to be a teenager? I remember when I take time to remember what it was like to be a freshman in high school, to worry about what other people thought about me, to uh, want the approval of peers, and then to struggle through those first relationships with others. It it helps me be a better parent because I can empathize more. Maybe go a little deeper with that of the, you mentioned it too, dwelling. The dwelling is not like what we're used to. In other words, it's not about commiserating. It's not about living in the past. The dwelling is to move forward. Well, right. It's to provide us a blueprint for the future. Yeah. Because no matter how smart we are, none of us know what the future looks like. But we can take the lessons from the past to prepare us for the future that is to come. And by the way, if you have a hard time empathizing with teenagers, it's really easy, shameless plug, if you come and join us as part of our leadership at Harbor Youth, right? You're in the lives of teenagers. It's really easy to understand what they're going through and reflect on what you've gone through and help. But um, talking about that's taking from... That's what smooth looks like. Yeah, no, that's... Hey, that's... Thanks. That's next level. So taking something from the past, giving you direction, it's really important too. Like that is the purpose of memory. It's, it's to bear good fruit in us. When we plug in to the source, the foundations of who we are, right? The Israelite people, the foundations of what God had done for them in their story. That they, he provided for the manna in the wilderness when it was against all odds that these amounts of people would survive through everything. When they could connect to that source, right? It organically will bring about good fruit in us. And I think what you were touching on, when we remember, when we empathize with our story where God was and how God brought us out of stuff, it gives a vision for the future. It gives us the ideals to strive toward. And I think that's what you're talking about with um, just um, bringing this up. And, and I think in, in the direction of the church, even the thing that we've been going through, the thing that has been kind of this mountain, this obstacle in our face for so long, part of the reason we're up here, all three of us, is to show this, this idea that we are unified as a team, as a direction, that God has brought us through so much as a church, and he's got us on this purpose. Absolutely, that 
memory is a sacred act yeah. when given over to God. And in John's gospel, Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And on the night that he breaks bread with them, of course, he says, do this in remembrance of me. That's part of what we do. But he also says this uh, specifically about remembering. He says, I have said these things to you while I am with you. And this is John 14, verse 25 and following. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Sometimes we forget the, the gospels, the earliest gospel was written at the earliest 10 years after Jesus's death and resurrection. And the latest gospel is possibly written 70 years after that. So this idea of memory is, it, it, it is engaging when we give it over to the work of God and the Holy Spirit that is of God itself, uh, then we can be spiritually built up uh, and so, for instance, my guess is that pretty much everybody who's in this room and those of you who are watching online have had a moment in your life where you didn't know how you were going to get through it. Mm. When the best you could do was pray one of those prayers, like I mentioned in the pastoral prayer, the help me, help me, help me prayer. Uh, we've all prayed that. Like, God, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know how to figure this out. I'm at a loss. And yet, here you are. Some of you are in the midst of that time right now. And part of a strategy for handing that over to God and allowing God to redeem it is to look back on those times in your life when you saw God get you through mm -hmm. to the other side. And that gives courage, that gives hope, and that gives a perspective that, you know, the God who got me through that will get me through this. And the God who gets you through this will get you through whatever is to come. Because that's the larger story of Scripture. And that's why Israel is constantly called back to remember. Remember when you were slaves in Egypt. God got you out of that. Remember when you were in the wilderness and you had no food. God fed you. Remember when you were thirsty and God gave you drink. Remember when you weren't a nation and God made you a nation. Remember when you were in exile and God delivered you from that. So it goes over and over again. God sees us through and as a congregation, as we said last week a little bit, been through hard times before. God is the one who brings the future. God is the one who empowers, who energizes, who sends forth that Holy Spirit of God to build up the very body of Christ. And when we give ourselves over to that, we can look at our present and go, okay, this is our reality. We're not going to shy away from that. Been through this congregational vote. We, we're staying with the United Methodist Church. Okay, all right, whatever that may mean. It means that we give it over to God to provide for the future because God has been at work in this place for a long, long time. Yeah. And God's investment in this place is ongoing because God's been faithful in the past, will be faithful in the future. One of the results of us not remembering is lack of appreciation of how we got where we are. Because when we don't remember, then it becomes more about our efforts, how we got ourselves to where we are. And so I think that's one of the reasons for the emphasis as well, not just empathy, but to put our relationship in alignment with where God has shown up in our lives. And so Ben, I came across this quote before we talk about some possible applications for us to do a better job remembering. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this quote. It says, when we remember where we came from, we notice the alien, the orphan, and the widow. When we take care of the alien, the orphan, and the widow, we are reminded of where we came from. And I wrote this note down. When we forget where we came from, we begin to treat everyone around us differently. Dude, 
That's such a, a massively important idea, the cyclical pattern of when we are intentional, when we stop and we reflect and we remember where we came from and what God brought us through, like Steve was talking about, and we take care of those people that are in the trenches of life, the most vulnerable, and we advocate with them and do life with them and we support them with the grace and the love that God gives us. Like We are then just reminded that much more of the gospel story and, and who what our identity is. Right. And, and for this congregation in particular, I've been your pastor since 2016. It's been the, one of the greatest blessings of my life. Um, and does anyone remember 2020? Anybody remember what happened? We, we were, you know, we were in a capital campaign. Look, and our goals were to build mission space. It was to pay off the debt was to do interior renovations that were much needed. And our commitment Sunday was the last Sunday in March of 2020. Well, what was it, the first, second Sunday of March that everything shut down? And all of a sudden it went from these lofty goals of what of, of accomplishing these things for the sake of ministry to can we keep the doors open? Not that we needed them open because nobody could come. <laughs> But it was a scary time. It was a, in a way, it was an anxiety producing time for everyone because we just didn't know what would come. Well, of course, what happened out of that? Well, Bob alluded to some of what happened to that. This congregation, inspired by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the generosity of God Almighty, through a pandemic, not only kept ministries up and running, we expanded ministries. Not only did we take care of the facility we had, we improved the facility that God had given us in significant ways. The mission center was built, 5,000 square feet dedicated to outreach into this community. The debt was paid off, and we're still working towards those interior renovations. We have a group that's active, and I think it meets next week or something like that, right, Gary? All right. See, and if uh, and if any of you want to provide God's grace and provision for that, we're, uh, we'll talk after the service. God carried us through a very difficult time, just in the recent past. Not to mention all those times some of you have been in this church all your life, and you've seen the challenges that God has seen this congregation through over those times. So the God who is faithful in the past is faithful in the present, and you can count on God being faithful in the future. And to piggyback on, on that, and David, you, you said earlier that if we, the consequence, if we do forget, um, there's a lot of negative consequences if we forget who we are and what God has done. Like Steve just alluded to a very practical example, but also Steve last week, you brought up this church has gone through world, world wars, drafts, like this church has gone through civil rights crisis, all, all the, the, the great depression. Right. And I mean, God has brought this church and every one of us is part of this church and our story. Um, I'm very recent. I've only been here three years, but I've, I've, I've come to obviously be part of this body, part of this community. And, and one thing I think Jesus says about remembering in Revelation 3, he talks about obviously the John, who's the author of Revelation, but I think this applies to us too. Uh, there, and there's two stories I want to bring up. One here in Revelation says, so remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know what hour will come to you. Um, there's this consequence, and, and I know this is applying to a different context, but I think the principle is like the parable of the, of the seven demons, right? There's this person that basically has a demon living in their, in their house, which is their mind, and they finally get relief. That demon is cast out. Um, but because they don't remember their struggles, their early uh, demon, whatever that was, that demon comes back and finds that the house is nice and clean and invites seven more of their friends. That story that Jesus says reminds me that it is very imperative that we stay close to our struggles, that we remember what we've been brought out of so that we don't fall trap and fall victim to them again. We lose our sense of identity. We lose our sense of identity as a church. We lose as an individual. There are negative consequences if we don't connect ourselves to the roots. That is the fact that God loves us, right? He loves you. You are his beloved. He has forgiven you, 
right? He has given us grace and power and gifts to then, like he said to Israel, bless all nations. This is our vision. This is our goal. This is our ideal is that we are to remember where we came from so that we can bless all nations. So the importance of remembrance, maybe some ways that we can put into practice real quickly. One, everyone has a cell phone, probably has a few hundred photos on it. Believe it or not, easy, quick devotion that we all can participate in. Flip all the way back to the beginning of where those photos start and just look at three of them a day and contemplate, think about, uh, remember why you captured their, those photos and they're still on your phone. And thank God for those incredible memories. Another one that's very important for us to remember, the day we gave our life to Christ. That should quickly put things into perspective when we gave our life to Christ. And I don't think we should ever not remember that day. And then lastly, a final application, when we came here and why we came to this specific body, this congregation, why God called us here, why you chose to serve here, I think that would be an awesome thing to remember as well. And I think it's important for us to not forget what time it is. And uh, we are up against uh, the, the hour, but grateful for your participation, for your attentiveness. Thank you for being the church of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we are grateful for the ways you shape us, for the ways that you speak deep into our hearts and minds, that you stir up memories that spur us on to connect to you. Give us, O oh Lord, the wisdom to spend some time and to think, to contemplate, to dwell within the story that you have written in our own lives and to connect that to the larger story of what you are doing in all of creation and have been from the very beginning, specifically now for us in this church. May we, O oh Lord, never forget and may we always remember in Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn is How I Love Jesus. Would you please stand as we sing together? Uh, if you would prefer a hymnal, it's page 170. If not, the words will be behind me. And we are actually going to sing just verse 1. <laughs> it did <laughs> but it's very simple we carry Christ with us out into this community and we are blessed to do that may you go and be a blessing back to the creation God has gifted us all with in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen mm -hmm.